Um, hello, a very, very good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Dr. Thuba, and as you know, I am a dentist by profession in Denmark. And my main aim of uh, the channel is to guide all the doctors and dentists who would like to consider Denmark as an option to work here. So firstly, I would really like to thank everybody. I got approximately seven to eight emails and that would 100% definitely encourage me to make even more videos because now I know that many people are interested in knowing more about uh, Denmark and the Danish lifestyle here. So thank you very, very much once again. So um, I would like to say that all the emails that I got, the questions I got, I would uh, discuss the answers, but the names are going to be strictly, strictly confidential. If somebody wants me to use their name or mention their name, they can mention it in the email. Otherwise, uh, the names would never be mentioned. It's uh, strictly confidential. So um, let's start. Yeah, so I basically got um, approximately seven emails, seven to eight, in which three email emails were very, very similar. The question was, uh, the questions were very similar. So I would answer it them collectively. Right now, I'm going to answer some of the different questions that came to me. Most of the questions were actually very much related to the Danish language, the concerns about the Danish language. So I would also make another video later on about this because I understand this is a very important topic of concern. So I'll, I'll start with your uh, questions now. So one question the email came to me was, hello, Dr. Thuba. I, I personally know three doctors, not dentists, but doctors who went to Denmark, but they came back after three years. They said that life is extremely hard and the Danish language is very hard and it is extremely difficult to achieve a high uh, score in the Danish language. So I need to ask you about it. Is Danish really that hard? Now, that is the first question. Um, thank you very much for this, uh, for this question. It is a very important question, of course. Okay, so uh, the first thing you asked me here is, they told you the life is very hard. Whichever country you're from, I would like to ask you that question, is life easy in that country? Because every life is difficult in general in many countries, in, in every country. So if life is difficult in Denmark, is it also difficult where you live? That would be, that would be something I would like you to think about first. Uh, secondly, I really, really would like to say one thing. Please do not compare your life, your journey with somebody else's. This is a mistake that I'm, I'm also guilty of making, I'll be honest. Um, and many people do. But uh, please don't compare your life. Secondly, they say, uh, it's also written that they came back after 2.53 2 years and they said that um, the Danish language is extremely hard, as they said. So, and of, maybe they could not achieve the score and uh, they came back. So here I really would like to say another thing that when we are in high school, when we are doing GCSEs, A-levels, etc. Or even in, normally if we are, you know, in, in primary school, we know a lot of classes, our seniors who tell us that, oh, you know, in this subject, five people failed or four people failed. Now, that doesn't mean that we stop education altogether only because our seniors told us that in next class, when the next exam, many people fail. So we don't just stop our education at that time, at that point of time. So just like that, just because some people could not do it does not mean you will not be able to do it either. You would definitely be able to do it. So do not compare your life. Uh, do not compare your life with anybody else in that regard. So the, the main question is, is Danish really that hard? Okay, number one, my personal opinion, Danish is not that hard. See, there are two types, uh, there are many types of languages. Some languages are difficult in pronunciation, but they're easy in order to, you know, they're easy to learn and understand. On the contrary, there are some in which the, the pronunciation is very easy, but it's very difficult to write. Den Danish in general is the language where I feel that the pronunciation is more difficult, but in general, it is easier to learn. And especially it is pretty much related to English also, it is. There is a similarity that we can see. It is different, but there is a similarity with English. So it is not, I don't think it is that hard. If you take it seriously, it is not that hard. 
So um, that would be my answer. And lastly, I feel any language that you learn, whether it is Chinese, whether it's Urdu, whether it's Arabic, any language, every language is difficult if you don't um, if you don't know that language. And once you start learning it, it gets easier. And with practice, it gets more easier. So my, my, my conclusion to this question is that the language is not that difficult. With the right guidance, you would be very you would be able to learn the language very, very easily. So don't worry about that. I, I hope um, I answer the question. If there's any other issue, if there's any other query, you're most welcome to email me again. And thank you for your question. OK, so the second question is um, this is actually a very interesting question. <laughs> so. Uh, the question is, hello, Dr. Dubai, I've heard that the culture in Denmark is extremely different from uh, from the culture of other countries, for example, um, USA, UK, etc. So I need you to tell me, is it really that difficult to adjust in Denmark? OK, so culturally, yes, the culture is very, very different here. It is more of... Uh, European culture we can say and yes it, it, it is very different once you come here you can feel a cultural shock I did too um, but I, I would like to say that the cultural shock is not like in a negative way it is in a very positive way you know um, from personal opinion I personally uh, think that many things that are sometimes considered toxic um, sorry there are some things that are considered very normal in other places are actually considered toxic in Denmark you know so they have a very sensitive approach over here. But I personally think that if there is a cultural shock, but honestly, it is in a very, very positive way. It's not in a negative way. And it's always good to learn about other cultures, to learn what is better in their culture and to adapt yourself accordingly. That's what it's all about. So, yeah, I, I, I think they, they, that you would not have any problem with that uh, in that regard. So, uh, yeah, I think that would be my answer. I, I would make a video of the of the cultural differences also someday, but um, for now that would be my answer. And thank you for this uh, for this question. Thank you very much. Okay, now coming to the third important question. Hello, Doctor Thuba. Someone told me that we have two years to complete the Danish language. Is it true? And how much time did you take? Regards. Okay. Um, first of all, someone told you that it uh, they uh, they give you two years. That is correct. When you get the visa to come to Denmark, they give you two years only. That is correct. But in these two years, for example, you gave the exam. Unfortunately, it did not. Uh, you did not get a high score. You achieved. Basically, the exam has three components. So if you achieved a score in two of them and in one you did not, they give you an extra year. After two years, if you tell them that this has been my problem, uh, or even if you don't tell them and they see that you have appeared in the exam, but you did not clear it, they give you one extra year. So it's not that after two years, they'll ask you to, they'll not give you a visa. That's not true. They will give you an extension. So you have three years. But I personally think that in one or one and a half year, you should be able, you should, if you're serious, you would be able to do the language. You'll, you'll be done with it. So... Hopefully, you would not need 2.5 or 3 years, so it would be fine. I personally took a little longer, I'll be honest, but that was because of um, COVID and the lockdown. So we did not have uh, classes. We had online classes, but the exam used to get delayed again and again. So because of that, it took me a little longer. Uh, but I and also importantly, when I came to this country, I did not know anybody. There were some people I knew, but they, like I said in my first video, they misguided me a lot more than they guided me. So because of that, I started it a little late and I would not want anybody else to make that mistake. So whenever you come to Denmark, start the language as soon as possible. Do not delay it. Right. So that was all with the three um, very important questions and they all were related to the language. So I do realize that the language barrier is something that everybody gets scared of get scared of but um please believe me it is very much doable if i if i did it anybody else can also do it trust me and most importantly the only advice i would give you with the language would be please take it very seriously please take the language seriously that is the people who went back 
who could not uh, uh, you know complete the language who failed in the language were only the people who did not take it seriously so please do or who had other backup options of other countries so they left so please do not do that take it seriously and you'll be able to do it in approximately 2.5 sorry uh, one year to 1.5 years you would be able to do the language so yes and thank you for this uh, email as well okay so other than that i got three other emails but the topic of those uh, the questions in those emails were very much similar so i'm going to cover all of them together uh basically there were three to four people who applied for the danish authorization and unfortunately their authorization was refused they got a refusal email all of them all four of them in the email the main important thing that was written was that their clinical hours were not enough in some email uh, in two three emails it was written sorry in two of them it was written their clinical hours were not enough in two of them in the other two it was written their subjects were not enough so because of that it got rejected so here i would like to give um, give some advice i uh, the main thing here is that the transcript that you make from your universities um it has to be a little modified the the, the format has to be modified uh, and when that is not modified the correct way some misunderstandings develop so basically you need two types of transcripts you need a transcript for your clinical and practical hours and you need a transcript for your grades many people do not know this so they send only a transcript of grades or they send only a transcript of uh, their hours so you have to send both of them they're two different ones anybody who needs help in this kindly email me my email address will be right below this um, in uh, right below this video email me i would send you a guide of how the format or the transcript should look like you could check and uh, you could see that and check that and from there you would have a very good idea of what format you should follow in the transcript that would make a very very big difference and i also encourage all of you i'm sorry to hear about the refusal but please do apply again it it is much worth it it is very very much worth it so please do apply again so yes that would that would be all for today uh, the question answers if there are any other questions you are curious you are most welcome to email me on my email address which is which would be right below this video um other than that thank you very much once again and um, i hope i could help everybody um and stay tuned for more updates and um, have a lovely day everybody hi hi